Hi guys and ladies, welcome to another video. Today we have a triple unboxing and an update on Rosendu Matu. Uh, yesterday I did a tribute video to um, Mr. Matu who sadly passed away and um, Rosendu was um, kind of an icon in the community for 50 plus years and he really hi highlighted, uh, he was a master perfumer for the last decade or so of his career. And, you know, he really shined a spotlight on the good parts of Spanish perfumery. And there's a couple fragrances that, in the comments, some folks told me he was attributed to having a hand in helping. He's not listed as the primary perfumer on Parfumo, uh, so I didn't mention him on these, but I thought it was worthwhile to come back and make an amendment. You know, this is an important thing for me. I take this seriously. Uh, especially when someone like this has passed away, they deserve... You know, I'm I'm presenting this, even if only the thousand subscribers that I have right now are watching this. I'm presenting this like I'm presenting it to the world. You know, like I'm like I'm um, like I'm honoring the man, and so I want to be thorough and I want to be fair and proper. And so there's two scents that came up, both from the house of uh, Paco Rabanne. One is a woman's marketed scent, and one is a man's marketed scent. The first is the woman's marketed scent that came out um, when I was born, basically. 1985 is the year. Let me show you the box first. The fragrance is uh, a fragrance called La Nuit with the beautiful sun on the top of the box. I love that. I absolutely love that sun. Uh, but this is not a bright fragrance or that light shining on the box, if you will. Uh, this is not a bright fragrance. This is a heavy uh, floral chiffre for women in the 80s um, framework, right? So if you if you like fragrances like Teatro a la Scala that I did a first impression on on my channel and fell in love with right then and there, um, you know, if you like those big booming animalic floral chiffres. I mentioned um, Cetis de Givenchy. Uh, I would put this in that category. It's a little different than Cetis, but it goes... Cetis is a little bit maybe more wearable for every day. This is special event type stuff for me. So La Nuit de Paco Rabanne. Now this is a vintage bottle that I got from Anouge. You can see right there it says copyright Paco Rabanne Parfums 1985. So this is a uh, limited ingredient uh, box, and I don't know if you can kind of make out the batch code there, but uh, I think this is an old box from maybe the 90s or something. Um, Puige ended up buying the house of Paco Rabanne, and they discontinued this fragrance, unfortunately, but if you like big animalic floral chiffres. This is an absolute masterpiece. Some Rachel recommended this to me, one of my subscribers. Um, and the perfumer in Parfumo shows as Jean Guichard, but um, apparently uh, Rosendu had a big hand in this. So even though he's not listed, I wanted to give him credit. Look at the bottle. The bottle is absolutely stunning. I don't know if you can see, but the glass kind of um, comes to a point on the corners right here, like a point. And it's got that contrast between the shaded glass and the see-through glass. And, you know, there is a little reference to that light on the box, not from my light, but on the actual box, you can see the light from the marketing. And there's some shadows on the packaging. Very interesting stuff. But the fragrance, this is a splash bottle. It's the last one that Anuj had. My God. Oh, I need to wear this soon. I haven't made this my scent of the day, but I have worn it a couple times just, you know, before bed, like I will be prone to do with some of these feminine scents. And let me tell you, if you like fragrances like Teatro a la Scala, if you like the big, heavy, feminine targeted fragrances like Opium, even though this smells nothing like Opium, if you like those big 70s, 80s, huge feminine targeted fragrances they used to release back then, Poison, 
I would check this out. I would put this right at the top of the list. Now, this is the Eau de Parfum version. I don't know about... I don't know about the Eau de Toilette. I've never smelled it. But I can tell you that I think this is an absolute winner. Um, so happy to have a bottle. Apparently, they're getting harder and harder to find. And men, do not be afraid of this, that it's marketed towards women. Again, if you like some of those other fragrances that I like, this is a... I don't want to say masterpiece, but it's in that, you know, it's in the range of the other fragrances that I absolutely adore. The other one is a fragrance that is also an animalic, but it's marketed towards men. It easily could have been marketed towards women, this scent. But this is when the gender lines really started to get crossed on some of these. I mentioned Alain Delon's Iquitos where it was supposed to be Dior's Poison, but they market it towards men. This is something similar to me. If you like fragrances like Akitos, check this out. This is Paco Rabanne's Tenere. Now, Tenere shows Pierre Wargnay as the perfumer, as the perfumer who did a couple fragrances I've mentioned lately. He did the Baldessarini Eau de Cologne from the early 2000s, but his masterpiece to me is Hugo Boss Number no. 1. That is my favorite honey fragrance. Uh, this has a honey note in it as well, and it does have a little bit of a Hugo Boss type vibe, even though it's a Paco Rabanne fragrance. It has this Hugo Boss vibe from the 80s for some reason to me. You know, it was similar time for him, I guess, when he was working on Boss Number no. 1. This is only three years later. Now, this is my small 25 ml bottle. I have a 200 milliliter backup. I love this fragrance that much. Uh, and it's this spicy floral scent, but with some serious teeth. So Eugene said one of the fragrances that Rouge Hermes has, te has teeth. He was using that phrase to describe it to me whenever I decided to buy it. I would use the exact same phrase for this. This fragrance has teeth. One of the followers of my channel who is earlier on in her journey said this is a little too hard for her to wear right now. But then there's other subscribers like Rudy. He came back after buying it when I was talking about it. And he said, mate, this is an absolute treasure. I love it. And I, I completely agree. So if you have trouble with this, put it away for six months, nine months, come back to it. You know, let your nose mature a little bit. But Tenere, oh my God. You talk about animalic, indolic, florals, spicy florals. My God. I love these type of scents. Um... This is a grand scent. This is an announcing scent. This is you walk in the room, everyone stops. Even if you're not the boss, you walk in, everyone stops and looks at you, even the boss. You wear something like this, you wear a Kitos, you know, you're, you're, you're going to command the room, eyeball-wise. No matter who the boss is, you're going to command the room. This is this bergamot with cassia, this, um, this pissy um, blackberry, blackcurrant leaf with grapefruit, uh, lavender, rosemary, lemon, and then the heart is an aniseed, artemisia, tarragon, carnation, honey, orris root, jasmine, lily of the valley. It is May. It's lily of the valley month. It's Muguet month. Lily of the valley, rose, cinnamon, amber, leather, musk, patchouli, vetiver, and cedar in the base. My God. I mean... You talk about an indolic, jasmine, floral, pissy, honey, you know, the cassia makes it, um, you know, adds that green pissiness to it, that bitter, pissy smell that uh, was so popular in the 80s that I love. It adds character to a fragrance. It's not just clean, easy to wear, that kind of thing. So he was, so somebody mentioned that um, Rosendu worked with Pierre Wargnay on this fragrance. He isn't credited in Fragrantica, but since we were doing a honorary video for him, I only thought it fair to add this little asterisk to it, and I'll, I'll properly title the video and everything. I want to do scent of the day before we do the unboxing. I have a triple unboxing. One of the people wants to remain anonymous, the big box. Um, so thank you to, I, you know who you are. Thank you for sending that to me. Um, one of them, I can tell you who it is. And one of them, I have no clue who it's from. It's a mystery. So let's talk about my scent of the day first before we get on to the unboxing. 
My scent of the day is, I, so I had to go meet, speaking of big bosses, I had to go meet one of the big bosses today, which I haven't met face, face to face before. There's some changes in the company. And so I went to go meet him and we were going to just do lunch. So I didn't want to wear, you know, a suit like yesterday. I wanted something a little more casual. So I'm in a dress up suit, but a little more laid back. And, but I didn't want to wear something that I didn't want to wear Antaeus. Uh, like I did yesterday for it. Although I really wanted to wear that again. I love that scent so much. So I went with this. This is Chanel's Bois de Zille. My God, this fragrance. You know, some people say that this fragrance takes them a while to grow on them. I love this from very first spray. So for me, First of all, it's not a light scent. This is the vintage Eau de Toilette that's discontinued. Now they only sell the Eau de Parfum. So this is the vintage Eau de Toilette. I got this little partial bottle from Anuj. I'm sorry, Moudisir on base notes. And this is a 200 ml bottle. So even though it doesn't look like there's a lot of juice, that's 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 enough juice for me to, to get to know the scent and talk about it and stuff like that. I've worn this to bed a couple times. So when you first spray the scent, first of all, this is one of the greatest sandalwood fragrances ever created, ever. Maybe the best sandalwood fragrance. I think I, I'm going to say something crazy here. I'm going to say an insanity, but I think I like this better than Ego East. I'm sorry, but I do. I think I enjoy this better, more than Ego East. Now I do have a modern version of Ego East, so maybe if I had a vintage, it would be different. But for me... I like Bois de Zille. and the reason that I like Bois de Zille is so when you first spray, you almost get this salty ambergris feel for the first 20, 30, 40 seconds, and then it goes away. And what comes to the forefront is this perfect implementation of a floral, woody sandalwood note. And the reason I say floral, and there, there is a ylang lang note in here, but it's done to perfection. It's done to Chanel's, you know, sometimes ylang lang for me, if it's not properly dosed or properly uh, measured against the other notes, can come across as too much yellow floral. None of that here. The ylang lang is perfect. In fact, the floral ylang lang with the sandalwood reminds me that when whenever you see a sandalwood tree you will notice that there are these little red flowers that grow off of the sandalwood uh, and they don't grow far you know they're small little red flowers but there are flowers that actually bud off of the sandalwood at certain times of the year and this scent once you get past that ambergris like opening to my nose i get that am i got that ambergris opening today the heaviest when i wore it as my scent of the day it's still kind of there in the background that salty ambergris vibe uh, maybe it's the mixture of bergamot mandarin orange i don't know what it is because there's no ambergris listed but i get a huge ambergris note in the opening and then you get that sandalwood ylang lang combo, but it reminds me if you just took a capsule and you put it around a sandalwood tree with the flower and you just snapped a picture, just a perfect picture of the floral sandalwood. Absolutely stunning, executed to Chanel's, um, executed to Chanel's high level, you know, their class. This is class all the way. And the reason I wore this is I didn't want to offend anyone. You know, I wanted it to be pleasant. I wanted it to be inviting. I didn't want to wear Koros, even though I want to wear Koros. I didn't want to wear Koros today. But God, I've enjoyed this. I, I, I'm so happy to have experienced this. It's such a joy. Even though it looks like I don't have much juice, that's, that's enough for me. And I'll do a full review of this one day. I honestly don't know what else I can say about it other than that. But I'll think of something. So, let's do the unboxings. Um, let's do the mystery one first. And the mystery one, I have no idea what this is. I hope this is even a perfume. Uh, it was sent to my P.O. box, so I assume it's a perfume. But let's take a look, shall we? Let's see what we have here. A good old-fashioned unboxing. this 
I have no clue what this is. What is this? Um, well, I'll show you guys. I don't know what this is. It says... It says micro perfumes, Calabasas. There's the disclaimer if you care to read that. Micro perfumes is owned by Perfume Ventures Inc. PVI, a wholly independent and separate entity from the manufacturer or brand owners of this designer freight. What is this? Why do I have this? <laughs> Um, I'm honestly stumped. I don't know what this is. <laughs> How did they find my P.O. box? Is this like an advertising thing? Ah, oh, okay. I know what this is now. All right, I had to continue to open it. it. It stumped me for a second. This is a 5 ml decant of 24 Falberg. So, uh, Rachel, um, okay, there we go, 24 Falberg. So Rachel sent me some Maurice Roussel sam samples. And one of them was supposed to be Jean-Claude Elena's interpretation of 24 Falberg. Well, where is it? Here it is. So she sent me this and a couple other samples from her bottle. And I was going to do a comparison video, but she accidentally sent me all Maurice Roussel's, not none of Jean-Claude Elena's interpretations of 24 Falberg. So she said she made a big purchase from the Hermes store and they said they would be happy to send me a decant. So this is the decant. I At first I was like, what is micro perfumes? I've never heard of this before. So there you go. All right. Thank you, Rachel. I, I really do appreciate your consideration and I will do a comparison video between the Maurice Roussel version and the Jean-Claude Elena version. Um, at first, I was like, how how did this Micro Perfumes brand get my P.O. box? Okay, so there you have it. Uh, mystery solved. Okay, so let us uh, continue with the rest of the unboxings. First, this is a fragrance that was sent to me by Heinke. Uh, thank you very much. Very, very kind of you. Seriously, you guys are way too kind. Like, I, I can't say thank you enough. Um... I know thank you doesn't cut it on some of these bigger items like you guys are just too much so here we go let's uh, let's see what this is shall we got my unboxing knife all right you what do we have here That's right, I do remember now. Okay, this is Explosive by the house of Etienne Aigna. Uh I did a first impression. Oh, wow. That is definitely explosive and unique. I can't wait to try that on skin. There's the batch code. So she said, hey, I've got this bottle and I'm probably not going to be using it. Would you like it? Because I was thinking about buying it. Some people highly recommended Explosive. Uh, this is a feminine targeted fragrance. But um, some of the noses that I really trust, like, for example, I think Jonathan was one of the people who recommended it. Jonathan 1970. Let's pull up the notes, shall we? Explosive Etain Eigner from 1986. The production was apparently discontinued. That's no good. Um, and it says the top is aldehydes, bergamot, coriander. The heart is geranium, lily of the valley, lily of the valley, rose, and iris. And the base is ambergris, moss, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver. 
And uh, 1986, I mean, no, no perfumer listed. Let's see if there's one on Fragrantica, just out of curiosity. There's not one on Parfumo. Let's see what Fragrantica has to say. Explosive. A Chifra floral fragrance. Coriander, aldehydes, bergamot, rose, geranium, orris root, lily of the valley, oak moss, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood musk. No perfumer listed. Um, can't wait. Cannot wait to check this out. Thank you. Thank you, Heike. That's very, very, very kind of you, honestly. I think, I think this might be one of the only free bottles in my collection, actually. So I can't say I've purchased all these with my money anymore. Technically, that wouldn't be true. But no brand has ever sent me anything. So I'm okay with that. And I actually like the bottle. Look, it's got like a, I don't know what that is, like an explosion happened there. Very nice stuff. Uh, she also sent me a decant of Rosen Queer, which I just bought a bottle of. So I will be doing a... I will be giving this a wear very soon. Maybe I'll make this my scent of the day soon. Can't wait to wear that. Very much looking forward to Rosen Queer. Um, and there's some more goodies in here. Let's see what other goodies came from Heinke. Ooh, these are wrapped. These are wrapped very well. Let's see if I'm going to be, even be able to open these on camera. She wanted to make sure they did not come out, which, uh, thank you. Nothing worse than spending all the time to do this and then have it leak on you. Okay, let's see what we got. Queer by LT Pivare? Pivir? I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. Um, I love I love leather. I love leather. Absolutely. This will be a great first impression video right there. Let's see what else we got. It's like Christmas Day around here. <gasps> Gallo by Hermes. I've been wanting to try Gallo for a long, long time. All right, I'm giving up. I'm pulling out the knife. Okay. Gallo. So we have first impressions of Gallo. That is very exciting. Which one, which one, Gallo or Rose and Queer, guys? What is your favorite? I honestly have never smelled either. I bought that Rose and Queer and I don't think I've even sprayed it yet. Um, and then, I want to make sure I'm not leaving anything in the bottom of this. All right, thanks again, Heinke, seriously. Very blessed. Blessed to have you guys as friends. Um, stuff I never would have got to try before, so it's a big blessing. Now the big box. And this gentleman is going to remain anonymous. So I'm going to try to open it down here. I should have opened this since he's going to remain anonymous anyways uh, before I did this. But we'll make it work. You know me, I don't panic. I'll make it work. I'll, either I'll just cut through the dang box or I'll just rip it open. Hang on. I'm going to be a barbarian. Ah, we have a box inside of a box. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. We've got Roja's Oh the Exclusive Parfum. Wow, and it's almost full, unbelievable. You are too much, you know who you are. Uh, Let's see what else we got in this little goodie bag. The discovery set of, of what? 
The discovery set of what? What is this? How do I open it? It's a mystery. I'm going to show you guys real quick. Uh, the discovery set of... I don't know. What is this? By Nobile? Nobile Parfums? For him and her. Nobile Parfums. I don't really want to be a barbarian. I was hoping to uh, properly open this. Does this come apart? Ah, it pulls out. There we go. Okay, now we're in business. Let's see what the discovery set of Nobile... Oh, this is Spirit of Dubai stuff. Holy shit. What the... F <laughs> oh, you guys are absolutely insane. Literally insane. Wow. Wow. I don't know what else to say. I literally do not know what to say about this. Other than, thank you. How, I mean, these, <laughs> these samples are, I can smell them just from here. They're so complex. I don't even know how to use, how do you even use this thing? It's like, uh, look at this. I'm, I might not be smart enough to use this. Does it open up? Let's see. Aha. We have Maydan. Hey, you know what, though? At least for a brand that charges the kind of money that Spirit of Dubai does, which their perfumes are like a thousand, two thousand. They have the most expensive perfume. They passed Clive Christian. Go look up Spirit of Dubai Most Expensive Perfume. The thing is, like, taller than me. You know, it's unbelievable flacon and stuff. But at least for a brand that charges all the money that they charge, at least they have the good taste to put a dang cap on their sample. You know, I mean, when you're selling a fright, That smells beautiful, by the way. It smells like real oud. Uh, when you're smelling a... Or when you're... Um, when you are charging the kind of money that some of these brands are. Like, look at look at Roja's samples. I showed you guys this before, but I just want to show you again. Look look at Roja's samples. What is this? This is um, Burlington 1819. This is one of his new ones, right, that he expects you to pay hundreds of dollars for for a citrus fragrance. Look at Roja's samples. Okay, you see that? Now keep that in mind. And look at Spirit of Dubai's samples. Well, first of all, look at this. Look at this little thing that it's in. It's like a scroll. And then you take it out, you open it up, and you wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and there you go. With a cap. A proper cap. And the atomizer doesn't look like shite. Anyways, rant off. Thank you, mysterious subscriber who shall not be named, I will be doing a entire discovery set on Spirit of Dubai, which is just an absolute blessing. Um, I feel like Thomas, whenever he got that free bottle of uh, Roja's Houtlux full, un unopened, I think I would literally have a heart attack on stream. Like you would just, you would have to call 911 and they'd have to come revive me. All right, I'm going to mess with trying to put this all back together later, I think. Okay, there it is. Beautiful. Spirit of Dubai. That's what it says right there. It says the Spirit of Dubai. I see it now. Okay. I was like, what is this Nubai no Nobile? Uh, um, <laughs> it's been a long day. It worked. Come on. All right, next on the list. Next on the list. And I don't know how we even have next on the list on something like this, but there is an entire list of stuff down here. Um, Jesus. H, the exclusive Aoud Parfum. I have not smelled this. I have not smelled either of these Roja's. O, the exclusive Parfum, or H, the exclusive Parfum. Um... just kind of smells like every other Roja 
exclusive fragrance. I don't know. All right, next. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's like, it's like, a, I'm, uh, it's, it's like I have a fairy perfume godmother, fa father, mother, father. Kajal, I was just saying I've never smelled any Kajals. Kajal Lamar. I wonder if one of these is going to be a Rosen du Matou fragrance. He did some Kajals. Um, oh my god. Jeez. Aaron Terrence Hughes Tabak. The greatest perfumer of all time. Aaron Terrence Hughes. I'm sorry. I'm a little excited. Um... There's no way I would ever spend any money on Aaron Terrence Hughes' fragrances. So, the fact that it was sent to me, um, at least will allow me to try it, because I would never buy this. Uh, I will tell you from the atomizer, it smells like food for greatness. Um, next. Wow, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds expensive. Angora Oud Extra. Take $15 off your next full size of Angora Oud. I've never even heard of this brand. Like, there's stuff in here that is like a mystery to me. Hmm. Okay, well, I've got a lot of first impression videos to do, in case you guys haven't noticed. Man, I almost just feel like saying, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Um, Mar Olfactive, never smelled this before in my life. I don't even know what this is. This is an entire discovery set. Jesus, sun-soaked. An entire discovery set of this brand I've never heard of. Mar Olfactif. Um, I don't know this brand. Label Perfumes. Does anyone know this? Olive wood and leather. Never heard of this brand at all. Um, amber and fig label perfumes. Interesting. Uh, and finally, well, not even finally, but finally from this little bag. Oh, matriarch, sweet. What is this? Hand blessed in Seattle, Washington from Grape Spirits Essential Oil. Hand blessed. I can get down with some hand blessing. Wow. Bittersweet Symphony. For all you perfume lovers who know all these, I don't know Bittersweet Symphony. The only matriarchs I know, and I actually own some matriarchs. Um, I own a couple matriarchs. I own some decants of Devotion and Beauty Wood. Devotion is actually one of my favorite incense fragrances. If I did, if I did like a top five incense, I think Devotion would be in it. Maybe top six or seven, but definitely, definitely top six or seven. Maybe even top five. All right, let's see what else we got here. Matriarchs, Parfum. What is, oh, Hand Blended. Why did I read Hand Blessed? 
Hand blended. I can't read after a long day. Sorry. Sorry, matriarch. I didn't mean to put words in your mouth there. What do we have here? Kazemi! I've been wanting to spell this. For a long, long time. It smells amazing from the Atomizer. Supposedly one of the best rose fragrances. Hand blessed. Just kidding. Uh, and the final matriarch. Tuka Tao? Tuka Tao There you go. Tuka. Tuka Tao Tao. Sweet. Okay, let's move on to the next piece of information in this little Christmas present for Ramsey, shall we? I still can't believe there's Spirit of Dubai samples in here. It's insane. Um, oh, Hiram Green! I've never smelled anything from the house of Hiram Green. Handcrafted and entirely natural. You guys know anything about this house? Apparently there's one called Slow Dive I'm supposed to smell. Da, 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 da. Very excited to smell this because I'm a honey lover. Slow Dive. When the Indian summer air is almost palpable. Someone told me, someone whose nose I trust told me that this is even better than Zoologist B. I would be very interested to, to find out. We've got, Jesus, we have basically the sample set. We have Slow Dive, Vetiver, Vivacious, Hide, Luster, Moon Bloom, and Ap Ar Arbol, Arbole? Arboli? I don't know how you say that. Either way, I am stunned. Uh, and we have one last box. One last goodie box. What in the tarnation is this? Wow. Sense of wood. An entire, like, little get-up. I've never smelled anything from this brand, but this is... Sense of Wood. What is this? Luminous Bois? Can't read it, it's so dark. Wow. It smells good from the Atomizer. Um, and it comes with a little candle. Look at this. Lame Dubois. I see. Wow. Um, honestly, I don't know what to say other than thank you. Um, to everybody who has ever sent me anything. Uh, but this was the kindest gift I've ever received. Um, so I, 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 I honestly feel unworthy, but I'm very excited to get my truck, to get my nose on this. And as you guys know, I will always give you my honest opinion. This came obviously from friends, not from brands, but even if a brand did send me something, I would still give you my honest opinion on it. Uh, even if I have some pre, uh, thoughts about their brand, um, I'll still be 100% honest. That's my that's my whole claim to wanting to do this channel is I want to give unbiased, you know, reviews and unbiased thoughts. And whether you agree with those thoughts or not, that's on you. But uh, at least you know that what I'm telling you is what I truly believe. And I'm not being influenced by brands or, you know, free bottles. I don't need free bottles. Um, but a lot of this stuff, you know, there's just so much out there. You could never keep up. I've never smelled anything from Hiram Green. I've never smelled anything from Spirit of Dubai. 
I've never smelled anything from Sense of Wood. So all I've never smelled anything from Aaron Terrence Hughes. Never smelled anything from Mar Olfactive. I've never smelled anything from, I mean, you just go down the list. I've never smelled anything from Kajal. You just can't keep up. One person can't keep up. So the, you know, kindness that you guys show in sending me these, it, it allows me to continue to at least keep as current as possible and then wear all the stuff I love, of course, in between. So uh, rest in peace, Rosendu Matu. Uh, I wanted to highlight your you know, fragrances, and this will probably be the thumbnail, even though this is an unboxing video. I'll either do the boxes or the, you know, two fragrances we talked about for Rose and Dew. So I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed this. I thoroughly enjoyed this. You could tell how shocked I was at everything I was pulling out. Um, and so to the anonymous member who was kind enough to send all these, thank you to Heinke. Thank you very much. Uh, honestly, very excited to try Gallo, uh, very excited to try Explosive, and um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed wearing uh, Chanel Bois de Zille today. Oh, and thank you to Rachel again for sending me the Jean-Claude Elena version of 24 Fauberg. Again, I, I am not worthy, that's all I have to say. I just, it, 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 it really touches me. You guys are so kind. You're, I, that's why I said the people in Fragcom are, are old school. They're vintage people to me. They're vintage people that I'm running across. People that you don't expect to run across these kind of people nowadays. You hear all the terrible things in the world and you hear about all the bad stuff on the news. But uh, this just goes to show, you know, not just this, but, a lot of my channel over the first six months of it or so just goes to show, you know, from the beginning, 99.9% .9 of people supported me and they were, uh, they would lift me up and say nice things and give me, you know, encouragement and that kind of stuff. Um, I mentioned from the very beginning, people like Eugene said to be yourself, that kind of stuff. I mean, those, those kind of people, the qual the quality people that you, dream about surrounding yourself with you I just found on the on frag it's unbelievable on fragcom just by talking about perfume which I love to do so it's like a double win-win for me I mean heck I got off work I worked all day I didn't even take my work clothes off and I sat down and made a video so I mean I'm obviously committed um so thanks for watching 42 minutes of an unboxing and uh, further giving rest in peace and condolences to Rosendu Matu's family. Um, and I hope, let me know what you think about this. I'm sure the comments, you guys will love this unboxing, but uh, let me know what you think. Cheers. I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye guys.